Appalachian State and Georgia Southern getting set to do battle in game two of a two-game set this weekend, the second weekend of Sunbelt Conference play. And with that, we welcome you inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. I'm Kendall Lewis alongside John Reister here with you today on ESPN+. Plus. Well, John, Georgia Southern led by as many as 16 points in the second half last night, and Appalachian State able to to really take control the last four minutes of that game and ended up winning 66-63. What can the Eagles do to turn things around today and what can the Mountaineers do to sweep the Eagles? Well, with Georgia Southern, they've got to stay aggressive. They've got to start aggressive, stay aggressive. They were very aggressive in the first half, got out to that big lead in the second half, and then for whatever reason, they took the, you know, the uh, foot off the pedal and kind of backed off a little bit, allowed App into the game. Appalachian, one of the reasons he got back in the game, to start playing inside out, not relying on three-point shot. James Lewis Jr. is very quietly having an outstanding season, shooting 84% from the field and well over 80% from the line in conference play. So they've got to start inside out. Uh, I anticipate a, a much faster paced ball game today than we had yesterday. Georgia Southern in their gray uniforms with the navy blue trim on the back and on the side of the jersey. App State in the black unis today. This one intercepted in Delph on the break. And he'll lay this one home. And the Mountaineers coming out in a 2-3 zone. They haven't played a lot of zone this year. And I think that confused Georgia Southern on the offensive end. Georgia Southern came into this series only shooting 27% from three-point land. And the short corner, Jay, missed short that time from Kamari Brown. And he gets up to pin it against the glass, but it's a goaltending call. And Adrian Delph has the first four points for the Mountaineers. Athletic play by Kamari Brown. Wow. Elbow above the rim on that block. Just got there a little bit too late. Ball had already touched the glass. That's a pretty easy call by the official. Kamari Brown only played three minutes in last night's game. Of course, Georgia Southern... Probably feels like they let one slip away. They had a 45 to 29 lead. They started the second half on a 6-0 run. They led by as many as 16 at 45 to 29. And give the Mountaineers credit, Dustin Kearns and his group so resilient, able to fight back and win that ball game last night. Open look from three. That's Eric Boone, and he knocks it down. He had a couple of threes in last night's contest as well. He's got great range on his three-point shot. Doesn't need a whole lot of time to get it off. Made a couple last night. Well, you kind of get the sense with Georgia Southern, John, that they're one quality shooter away from being an elite team in this conference. Well, and it could be a reason why Getty, used, I think, use a Pitus. That's a hard name, Kendall. Uh, he's starting tonight. He made a couple threes last night coming off the bench. Coach Brian Berg may be looking for a little offensive firepower to start the game. Uh, Yuza Piatus getting the start in this one for Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern made seven triples in the first half in last night's game. Just two minutes in, slashing downhill was Boone, and he was fouled. That's going to be team foul number one against the Mountaineers. And it's on James Lewis Jr. who was solid last night, 12.6 rebounds for the Mountaineers. And Dustin Kearns is gonna take James Lewis out and put R.J. Duhart in. That's not a bad move by Coach Kearns. You know, you don't want your big guy to get, pick up a second foul quick uh, in, the, in the first half, let him sit down for a couple minutes and then stick him back out there. Active hands on D by Adrian Delph. He has the first four points for the Mountaineers. Motion-based offense for Georgia Southern. They run a ton of different ball screens at various spots on the court to get guys open. And this is really a team full of slashers. They've got a ton of guys that can get to the rim and penetrate. Deshaun Parker is going to back it away. 15 on the shot clock for Appalachian State. Parker, good bounce pass inside as Gregory was fouled. And he'll head to the line to shoot two for Appalachian State.
good aggressive finish by Donovan Gregory. Probably would have had a shot blocked if he didn't go up with two hands for the dunk at 6'5". A little undersized to be playing inside, but plays very strong for his size and gets up off the floor really well. Here's Donovan Gregory on the first. He knocks it down. Let's take a second look. Good pass from Parker. Donovan Gregory just one of those guys that kind of factors into your keys for App State tonight, John, in, in a sense, playing inside and out. He can play anywhere on the floor pretty much for the Mountaineers. Well, he does a lot of his damage, Kendall, at the high post. Very good passer out of the high post, good mid-range shooter. And he can put the ball on the floor in the middle of, uh, of a zone or man-to-man -man also. So good compliment to James Lewis, Jr., who's, who's more of a, a power post, likes to do his work down around the block. And use a pianist, lost control. It's out of bounds. It'll stay with the Eagles of Georgia Southern. And the Mountaineers are switching a little bit on the perimeter defensively. They haven't done a lot of that this year, and maybe this is one of those little wrinkles that coaches are going to do uh, to change things up on these 24-hour these turnover games just to kind of give a different look to confuse the opposing team. And... Savrasov misses it on the right with the right hand as Gregory runs the floor up ahead. He'll go up strong. This one tapped around, and the rebound off to the Georgia Southern Eagles. Georgia Southern seven and five on the year, one and two in the Sun Belt. Use a pietist from deep. That was a long shot right there. He was good, seven or eight feet behind the three-point arc. Georgia Southern in their one-two-two full court pressure. They will mix it up defensively, but. When it comes to the half court, they are 99% a man-to-man -man team. And I really think it's imperative that the Eagles get off to a good start today. Really were hanging their heads coming off the floor last night after letting the Mountaineers back in that game and ended up with the loss. Last touch by the Mountaineers, so it'll stay with Georgia Southern. An old Southern Conference rivalry in this one, Georgia Southern and Appalachian State. In fact, this is the 54th meeting between these two teams here today. But they'll meet two more times in Statesboro in the regular season as well. And Uzipiatis with the jump shot was fouled. So a couple of free throws coming for the Eagles. And the first free throw up and good for Getty Uzapiatis. Uzapiatis doesn't get to the free throw line a ton. In fact, this is his first trip of the season. Really provided a spark last night for Brian Berg, the head coach, coming off the bench. He knocked down a couple of threes early in the first half. Kind of opened up the lead for Georgia Southern. Well, he doesn't get to the line because he's primarily a three-point shooter. Coming into last night's game, 12 out of his 13 shots were from three-point range. And if you're going to settle for threes and not attack the basket, you're really not going to get to the line very often. Delph sizing up Kamari Brown. Into the paint, switch hand for Gregory, and he finishes off glass. And there's an example of what Donovan Gregory can do for you. He can take it. Uh, to the basket from the perimeter. Just really effective in the middle of the floor. Rising, teardrop, no. And it will stay with Georgia Southern, but we're going to take a media timeout first. 15-32 left to play in the first half. Tied at eight all between App State and Georgia Southern. We'll be right back on ESPN+. Plus. Justin Forrest and Zach Bryan are impact players for tonight's game. And you look at Forrest, eight points per game overall, but he's averaging 14 points per game in conference play, John. And you and I have, were talking off air, shooting at a, an extremely high clip from three through the first three games of conference play as well. 53%, Kendall, from the three-point um, distance in conference play. That's almost unheard of. Um, 
he, we know he's a streaky player. He, he didn't get off to a good start this year, but seems like he's really rounding in the form at the right time for the Mountaineers. First team all Sunbelt selection last year for Dustin Kearns. Deshaun Parker dribbling around the top. He'll slice in. Almonese steps into a three. Bang! Michael Almonese was automatic last night from three and carrying the momentum right into today. And that's a good example of what I was talking about playing inside out. Not only can you get it to your post players, but get in the middle of the defense, draw everybody to you, and then find your shooters. And Deshaun Parker did, did an excellent job of that in that last possession. And Elijah McCadden with a three of his own to answer for Georgia Southern. These two teams back and forth, tied at 11, just five and change into the first half here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. And I tell you, with this athletic lineup that Georgia Southern has out there right now, I really think they're going to turn up the tempo on defense, and I would be surprised if they didn't press on every make the rest of the way out with, this, with these guys they have on the floor right now. Grant Weatherford picks up his dribble. App State's changed it up defensively a couple of times in this series already. And another one, this time it's from Kamari Brown. Limited minutes last night, but the Eagles take the lead with 14.05 to go in the first half. And Kamari Brown shoots a lot of threes. He doesn't shoot a high percentage, only in the 20% range on the year, but he is another one of those Georgia Southern players that can get really hot from long distance. And Weatherford poked it loose, and then it was last touched by the Mountaineers, so it will go back to Georgia Southern. And Eric Boone's going to check in, as well as Prince Toyambi for Georgia Southern. Dustin Kearns is going to go deep into his bench as well. A couple of substitutions for the Mountaineers. James Lewis, Jr., who picked up a foul a few minutes ago, as well as C.J. Huntley on the floor. And Toyambi couldn't get it to go from three-point land. And out of bounds off of Appalachian State. And, Ken, I like the fact that both coaches are playing a lot of players early in this game. You know, the fatigue of playing back-to-back -back is not going to happen until the second half. And I think they're doing a good job of preparing their teams for that by playing a lot of guys early in this game. Brian Bird played 11 players in the first half last night for Georgia Southern. And this is an offensive foul away from the ball going against Appalachian State. I really don't anticipate this game ending up like uh, the Troy game in the second uh, game last week where it was pretty much over by halftime. So I think it, with this being a, a close game, which I really anticipate it being, you know, the team that, that really battles the fatigue factor towards the end I think is going to come out on top. Well, and we know depth in college basketball plays such a pivotal role year in and year out, but especially this year, John, how – how beneficial is it, especially in this Sun Belt? As this one tapped around the floor. Now a loose ball. Lewis trying to throw it to Justin Forrest, and they say that it was off the Mountaineers. They said nobody touched it after James Lewis was looking to get it to Justin Forrest, but then Justin Forrest is arguing that it was touched by a Georgia Southern player. Yeah, it looked to me like uh – Saversoff might have knocked it out of bounds. It, it, yeah, it's easy to miss that. You, the official was awful close to the play on that. And sometimes when you're too close, you, you, you miss a bang-bang play like that. Going back, though, how, how beneficial is it, especially in these back-to-backs, that the teams with deeper benches, game of attrition could certainly be a, a factor in Sunbelt play this year? Well, I mean, it's it's different because, like you said, you're playing back-to-back -back two games within 24 hours, so it's it's kind of uncharted territory for all these coaches. They normally don't play like that. Even in the NCAA tournament, you've got a day between in most cases. So, um, you know, fitness is going to come into play. I just can't help but, but think that it will. Now, maybe not this early in the season, but definitely towards the back end of the schedule. Use a Pietis, nice move, and a good drop-off. And the flush for Prince Toyambi. I've been so impressed with uh, Toyambi. He's just a young guy, 6'7", 235, real explosive off the floor. Kid's got a bright future. Uh, he's going to be a player. He's going to be an impact player in the Sun Belt for the next three years. He had a double-double last night, just 14 minutes of action. 
James Lewis packing his way in on Toyambi, and he was bumped. And that's two big guys going at it right there, Kendall. Another media timeout at the 11.47 mark of the first half. It's a five-point Georgia Southern lead. We'll be right back on the other side of these messages. Sixteen eleven, the score here inside of the Holmes Cavication Center. Georgia Southern with a five-point lead. There's Brian Berg in his first season doing a wonderful job with this Georgia Southern program and heartbreaking loss last night. But look at the stops that he's made the last four years as an assistant under Chris Beard at Texas Tech. Stops at Campbell and Little Rock. He was a part of. Chris Beard staff in that 2015-2016 season when they went 30-5 and, and won the Sun Belt and even a game in the NCAA tournament. And the Eagles trying to build upon this five-point lead. This is the largest lead from either team so far in the first half. It's been a quiet 8-0 run that they've just uh, reeled <laughs> off. And... Uh, Mountaineers have, have started to do what they, they always seem to have a period of time in the first half with the exception of the last game against Troy where they just kind of lose focus on the offensive end and they go, like you said, two or three minutes without scoring and allow the other team to jump out on them. Well, it's a scoring drought of over three and a half minutes for Appalachian State. Kind of a similar story last night. Good pass inside and missing it on the doorstep was Andre Savrasov. Kind of a similar story for the Mountaineers last night. They had a six minute scoring drought and then a scoring drought that went over two minutes. So in the first half, almost eight and a half total minutes combined where they were without a bucket but we're still able to find a way to win the game. And I think that's one thing that Dustin Kearns has got to be proud of this group this year is the resiliency, especially in second halves of games. And you know they did that last year a lot too, Kendall. They'd get behind, they'd hang around, they'd hang around, and they'd just find enough at the end of the second half to get back in the game. And, you know, when they got back in the game, nine times out of ten they finished on top. So. Yeah, mental toughness is, is becoming a trait of a Dustin, a Dustin Kearns team. And, um, but I tell you, it's tough to do that night in and night out. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to play out ahead than it is coming from behind the whole time. Forrest misses on the first free throw. Justin Forrest, a 90% free throw shooter. That's a rare miss. Knocks down the second. Four-point Georgia Southern lead, just over 10 minutes. Looks like Mountaineers are playing that flat 2-3 zone again, matching up on the perimeter. McCadden into the paint. Now he'll pull it away. Looks like they've got him confused, too. High, fo high post flashing is Cam Bryant. And he's able to hit the turnaround. That's an excellent flash by Cam Bryant. Weakness of a 2-3 zone, especially the way they're playing James Lewis Jr. at the front of the rim, is getting that ball to the high post. Good things happen when you get it to the middle of the zone. And excellent job of catching, facing, and knocking down that 12-footer. Justin Forrest attacking downhill. He'll change direction. And Saversoff checks down the loose board. Good Here's Eric Boone. Good transition defense by the Mountaineers. Nowhere to go on that break. Good ball movement. McCadden from the corner pocket. And nearly saved back in, but they say off of the Mountaineers, it will stay with Georgia Southern. And Coach Kearns has got to be careful. The uh, official right there on the play whipped around. I don't know what was said, but uh, he's got to be careful over there. Uh, you, don't, you don't need a technical foul in this situation. Our officials, Brent Dugan, Christopher Merlo, and Raymond Tate III here this afternoon. And a whistle and a foul against Justin Forrest. And that's his second, so it might not be a bad idea to get him out of there, calm him down a little bit. He didn't agree with the call. Got 10 minutes left in this half. You don't want him to pick up his third. 
And that's Forrest's is second. As McCadden's able to rattle, or excuse me, Eric Boone's able to rattle in the first free throw. He's a JUCO transfer from John A. Logan College. He's actually fourth in the Sun Belt with two and a half swipes per game. That's good for ninth in the country as well in total steals. And with this a little different look here, Ken. They got pressure all the way up. They'll run and jump out of this man pressure too. It's not just gonna be a token pressure every single time. Mountaineers have gotta be ready for that. Almonese spins away from trouble. 15 on the shot clock. Delph, nowhere to go. Good D that time from Bryant as he rips it away. In transition come the Eagles. Extra pass right back to Kamari Brown for three. Shot didn't go, but that was a good looking break by the Eagles. Moved the ball consistently across the floor, made the extra pass. The intensity has picked up a notch for Georgia Southern defensively, but Adrian Delph finds his rhythm from three. And he was quiet last night. He's, he's been a very streaky player this year, and he's carried the Mountaineers on occasion on the offensive end. Off a screen, Kamari Brown again another open look. And Coach Burke's crew getting good looks from three, just not going down. Well, they don't shoot it at a high percentage. They, they, were, they made a bunch last night, but that was kind of out of character for them. Adrian Delph surveying the floor. He'll slice to the bucket, and he was hacked on the arm. Team foul number five on Georgia Southern. And as we talked about last night, one of their defensive principles, Georgia Southern, is they switch everything. And they don't, they don't care if it's a big on small, small on big screen. And that's a perfect example where it will hurt you. Saversoff at 6'8", got stuck on Delph, and Delph did a good job of recognizing out on the perimeter, hey, I got a big on me, I can take the ball to the basket. Now when you switch on everything, John, especially with the pressure type man-to-man -man that the Eagles play, how important is communication in terms of switching back so that you don't get trapped in mismatches all over the floor? Well, you, you can do that when you're on the weak side. If, if you got a mismatch on the weak side, well then that's a good opportunity to communicate and talk and get back to a guy that's more suited to you defensively. But uh, as aggressive as they are, it's, it's hard to do that because the Mountaineers are moving pretty efficiently on offense. Um, so, you know, a lot of times, you, whoever you have, you know, if, if the offense is not doing a lot of screening and the Mountaineers don't do a lot of ball screen. So it's, you know, a lot of times you're gonna get stuck with who you got. But, but in, you know, to answer your question more specifically, yes, communication is the utmost important thing defensively, regardless of what you're playing. You've got to talk to each other. Mountaineers. Now four of six from the free throw line. And it's a four point game. That's a mini 4-0 run over the last couple of minutes by the Mountaineers. This is a huge defensive possession for the Mountaineers. They've cut it down to a two possession game. They haven't been this close in a while. Use a Pietis, he can shoot it from there. He'll launch and connects. Right on cue, wow. Getty Uzepiatis. That's that's two deep threes from Uzepiatis. That's impressive. That was from a different area code, John. That was deep. That was out towards the corner of the A. That's pushing 30 feet. Almodice surveys, ignores the screen. Six on the shot clock. Parker's got a launch from deep. And good D by the Georgia Southern Eagles. Seven sixteen will take us to a timeout. Georgia Southern on top, 23-16. We've got a good one here at Boone today. Dustin Kearns in year number two here in Boone, North Carolina. Head coach for the Mountaineers and has a ton of experience as an assistant coach at some really good 
programs like Tennessee and Wofford. And he was a head coach for a couple of seasons at Presbyterian. And year two in Presbyterian guided the Blue Hose to their first 20-win season of the Division I era. So great young head coaches working the sidelines here this weekend for both squads. And Gregory just continues to fill it up, John, in transition. Well, I can't believe they didn't get a foul on um, use a Hiatus that time because he slipped up underneath uh, Donovan Gregory. That was obviously a block charge uh, situation in the officials, and Dustin Kearns almost came out on the floor. He was upset by the no call. Open three, and Boone cashes in again. That's two made threes for Eric Boone. And right now, threes adding up quicker than twos. Georgia Southern, six of 13 from three point land, and App State just two of seven. That's the difference in the contest right now. And the largest lead for Georgia Southern. Well, and this is what they did yesterday, Kendall, but for whatever reason in the second half, they, you know, they took their foot off the accelerator and backed off. I like it when they're playing like this. You know, this helps them on the defensive end. It gives them energy. And, um, you know, they're getting easy buckets running out on their defensive stops. That's why they're getting so many wide open threes. They're getting in transition. Dustin Kearns thought that it was off of Georgia Southern, but instead they say that it was a kick ball, I think, off of the leg that ended up sailing over the baseline off the Mountaineers. There have been a couple of calls in this one that have just been really bang, bang, and tough decisions for the officials. And Yuza Pietis again from deep. Wow. He's feeling it. He's really feeling it. You know, and at 6'5", he's hard to – It's his shot's hard to block. And Gregory attacks and scores. He'll go the line to try to complete a three-point play. Wow, is Donovan Gregory so explosive when he catches it in the high post or in transition just like that when he can attack downhill. Unbelievable upper body strength as well. Just a sophomore for the Mountaineers. He's the perfect complimentary player for James Lewis Jr. They really work well together. I know James isn't in the game right now, but uh, Donovan Gregory just, like I said, in the high post area in the middle of the floor is where he's most effective. So Gregory completes the three-point play and it's 29-21, just over five and a half to play. First half here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Zaversov trying to slip to the basket, fumble the pass. Here's Parker in the paint. Up and under, nice move as he finishes off the window. And a timeout, Georgia Southern. So we'll keep it right here, John. And all of a sudden, quick five points for Dustin Kearns and the Mountaineers. That's two possessions in the road. I'm sure Coach Berg's not real happy with their transition defense. Just a little bit too easy for the Mountaineers to get to the rim those last two possessions. I'm sure that's what he's discussing right now. Well, last night's game, 66-63, the final score. I told you that Appalachian State had to rally back from 16 points down. And you take a look at what Prince Toyambi was able to do for Georgia Southern, just amazing. He averages 14 and a half minutes per game. Coming into the series was averaging six points and seven rebounds per contest. Last night, a double-double at 12 points, 11 rebounds with the same minutes as his average, right at 14 minutes. I think that's a guy, John, that is going to continue to work his way up to more and more minutes for Coach Brian Berg. Well, the one thing he's got to do, which is the reason he's not in the game right now, is he's got to learn to play without fouling. He's a big physical kid, and uh, he ended up with four personal fouls last night. I think a lot of that had uh, his lack of playing time yesterday as he picked up his fourth early in the second half. So uh, once he figures out how to play without fouling and can get his minutes up, the sky's the limits for him. And the big man, Savrasov, is able to finish inside. Richard, sophomore from Russia. Of course, everybody getting this year back can return next year. That's going to really make things interesting for recruiting as Almonese buries the three. Great feed from Donovan Gregory. Once again, out of the high post, he gets where he wants to be, and then he finds Almonese for the wide open three. 
Uzapiatis has the hot hand. He'll step back. And an offensive board. Georgia Southern, the second best team in the conference coming in on the offensive glass. And this is where they can really make you pay. Yeah, they're averaging 14 offensive rebounds a game. That's that's a very staggering number. You know, most coaches um, really put an emphasis on defensive rebounds and blocking out. But I tell you, they they got a lot of guys that are athletic for their size. We talked about it last night. They're you know they're not only 6'6", 6'7", but they're 215, 220. You know, good shoulders, good athleticism, and that's what leads to a good offensive rebounding team. It was a nice spin move by Grant Weatherford to draw the contact. He's a transfer from IUPUI. He's a fifth-year guy, and he's a guy that's been around the college basketball landscape. Played at Purdue, too, Danny Kendall. Led the team in steals at IUPUI last year with 59. And this is a good, good transfer for Brian Berg because – He's an older guy, and they, they pretty much rolled their roster. They only have three returning players from last year's roster on this Georgia Southern team this year. So this is basically a group of new faces and a new coaching staff. C.J. Huntley back in the game for the Mountaineers. He's setting up in the corner. Pretty good three-point shooter from there. Almonese, and bucket one. and the foul. Like the leadership, like the leadership by Almonese waved Huntley to out of the way and then just took his man straight to the hole. 32-28, the Mountaineers have rallied back. Interesting finish to the first half coming up. 32-28, the series history, it dates back quite some time as these two teams meeting for the 54th time today. See that Ab State swept the series last year. It was Justin Forrest that hit a game winner in this building a year ago. At the last second, the first time these two teams met. And Michael Omanese to try to Complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way, and he does just that. All of a sudden, it's a three-point game, and Ab State's made their last four shots. Zabrasov could knock it down. I don't know if that's the shot. Coach Burns went out of that timeout. And Delft tried to step into a three, but it, here comes Georgia Southern. So they'll get it right back. Slipping to the bucket. Salversoff had it taken away by Delft. Deshaun Bark Parker barking orders here out top for the Mountaineers. Nice pass inside as James Lewis had it denied at the rim, and it was Uzapiatis that came over and got a piece. You know, he's he's sneaky uh, playing off the ball. He came snuck in behind James Lewis Jr., and I think James might have been caught a little bit under the rim on that, or he would have gotten the flush on the finish, but Uzapiatis did affect his shot. Corner pocket three is Kamari Brown. He loves that spot there on the floor. He's able to knock it through. Six-point lead for Georgia Southern. Mountaineers trailed by 10 at the break yesterday, but Georgia Southern got off to a 6-0 start to start the second half. So that was a 16-point lead for the Eagles just a couple of minutes into the second half last night. And Michael Almonese just so smooth on the jumper. Use Piatus, the shot fake. Parker dives on the floor. Good hustle play by the Mountaineers, but then they turn it, nearly turn it over into transition. And Delph somehow reverses it home. How did the Mountaineers score the bucket out of that? Wow, that was incredible that Michael Almonese 
could save that basketball. I think everybody here thought that ball was out of play. We'll get a chance to see it right here. Started with a good closeout from C.J. Huntley. Look at that. It, al it almost looked like the Georgian Southern defense just thought, okay, that ball's out of bounds and just kind of relaxed, and Adrian Delft just took it, took it in there and scored. We talked about the resiliency from this team and the hustle that time from the Mountaineers really showed. And it's a two-point game with 136. I knew these two teams matched up extremely well on paper coming in. And this is a pivotal weekend in the Sun Belt standings. Troy and Georgia State had both of their games canceled yesterday and today. So if you look at the East Division, you have Coastal Carolina and South Alabama, and then Tr App State and Georgia Southern playing here today. But Coastal Carolina won last night, so they're two and one. App State's two and one. One of those two teams can sweep their series this week, somebody's gonna have the top spot in the East and create a little separation just two weekends in to Sunbelt play. And Kamari Brown again, stroking it from downtown. I don't know what they ate last night and the night before, but whatever they're doing, boy, it's sure making a difference from the three-point line here in Boone because they're shooting the lights out two nights in a row. Parker gets to the bucket. He's got four in the first half. You know, it's amazing. The Mountaineers are shooting 57% from the floor, and they're still behind. It's that three-point shot equalizer that Georgia Southern's putting all over them. Too much space for there McCadden. Goes another one. And oh. he makes a pay. That's nine. That's nine in the first half. Well, last night, Georgia Southern hit seven triples in the first half as Delft gets to the bucket again and scores. Seven triples last night in the first half for Georgia Southern. And then in the, the second half, they only attempted four threes the entire second half. So we'll see if they can stay with that tonight and carry it over into the second half because were virtually chased off the three-point line in the second half by Appalachian State last night. Well, and I was wrong about the, the nine threes. They, they've got 10. They're 10 for 19 in the first half, Ken. That's 52%, almost 53% from the three-point line. And, and like you said, they did the same thing last night. You know, we've got 30 seconds left in this half. They've got to continue to play like that. And, and for whatever reason, like you said, now, now the Appalachian Mountaineers defense had a lot to do with that in the second half yesterday. They, they stepped it up, they extended out, and like you said, they got out and they covered the three-point shooters. But uh, wow, they put on a shooting display here in the first half. Shot clock is dead. There's 23 seconds on the game clock. And Eric Boone who has eight points, controls the rock right now. He has a couple of those 10 made three-pointers here in the first half for Georgia Southern. Boone spins, absorbs contact. He draws the foul against Deshaun Parker. Nice aggressive attack of the basket by Boone. Getting to the free throw line. Left a little bit too much time on the clock for me. A little over four seconds on the clock. That's going to get the Mountaineers an opportunity if they can um, – Box out, get this rebound, or, or have an inbound situation. They're going to get a shot at the other end. Probably should have waited at least another second or two before he attacked the basket. So with 4.8 ticks left, Georgia Southern trying to add to their lead. And I'd like to see the Eagles come out with just a, a little token pressure, 1-2-2, one, 1-3-1, two, two, one, one, something to slow the Mountaineers down so they can't just dribble straight through this. Dell full speed ahead, one, he launches just short. And a five point Georgia Southern lead at halftime, 42-37. We're gonna take a quick break. We've got plenty of content coming your way at halftime of Georgia Southern Appalachian State. The second meeting this weekend between these two will be right back on ESPN Plus. It's 42-37, Georgia Southern 
a five-point halftime lead over the Appalachian State Mountaineers, trying to avenge their loss from last night in which the Mountaineers won 66-63. Well, the first half was an interesting one. Ten made triples for Georgia Southern. We'll take a look at just how they did it in a few minutes. But 48% from the field, but they're shooting at a higher clip from three-point land. Explain that one, John. Well, that's hard <laughs> to explain with a team coming in shooting 29% from three-point range coming into this weekend. But, uh, and, and you know, the Mountaineers play great defense. So, you know, they've just had some guys get hot, and um, it's coming within the flow of their offense. Now, I will say they're getting a lot of them out of their uh, secondary break, which is hard to defend, harder to defend than in, in the uh, half court. Uh, I'm looking at the Mountaineers' side. I mean, they're shooting 56% from the floor. They're getting good shots. They're dominating the points in the paint, 18 to four which is why their shooting percentage is so high. But then again, you look at the three-point line, that's your big equalizer right there. Both teams are, are not turning the ball over. And Georgia Southern with 12 assists, they're really moving the wall, ball real, really well on offense, getting it to the right guy at the right time. And both teams with just five turnovers in the first half. That's interesting. I think both head coaches will live with that one there. They took care of the basketball in the first half as well. App State made four of their last five shots. Georgia Southern made their last three to end the first half. So this should be a fun field second half with an old rivalry between Georgia Southern and Appalachian State. It's going to be a good one. We're going to take another break. We've got some highlights and more coming up for you right after this. You're watching Sunbelt Basketball from the Holmes Calvocation Center in Boone, North Carolina. Forty-two thirty-seven, Georgia Southern up by five over the Appalachian State Mountaineers at halftime. And we'll take a look at some highlights. We told you Georgia Southern 10 made triples in the first half. They were on fire, 53% from three-point land. Can they carry it over the second half? That's the big question because they hit seven in the first half last night and were really chased off the three-point line in the second half by the Mountaineers. A good adjustment from Dustin Kearns at halftime last night. And we'll see if they can continue to get these type of looks in the second half. But Georgia Southern, exceptional from downtown. I'm sure Coach Berg's talking about that right now in the locker room, Kendall, that, you know, this is reminiscent of yesterday. And, you know, we came out, we lost our fire, we stopped moving the basketball, we didn't adjust well to what the Mountaineers did defensively in the second half. So uh, I don't see the same thing happening that happened last night with them. From the Mountaineers' side, you know, they've got the majority of their scoring from Michael Almonese and, and uh, Adrian Delft. Justice for, Justin Forrest only played eight minutes in the first half because of foul trouble, and I think that was a good move by Coach Kearns to set him down so he didn't pick up that third. So I think it's important to get Justin Forrest going in the second half. And James Lewis Jr. hasn't scored. So um, there's two guys right there that did a, a huge part last night to getting the Mountaineers over the hump scoring-wise that uh, I think is important that the Mountaineers get going early in the second half. Adrian Delph with 12 points, Michael Almonese with 11 in the first half, and then let's not forget Donovan Gregory as well. He really got going and attacking the rim as well in the first half for the Mountaineers. Those three did most of the damage for Appalachian State in the first half. In fact, they had 32 of the 37 combined points for the Mountaineers in the first half. It's 42 to 37. We're going to take one more break. We've got the second half and more coming up on the other side of these messages. Halftime between Georgia Southern and Appalachian State. If you're just tuning in, Georgia Southern with 10 made triples in the first half. We've got a good one shaping up again today. These two teams, a three-point game last night, 66-63. Mountaineers rallied from 16 down to come away with the victory. Let's look around the Sun Belt today at other games happening across the conference. As you can see, on the east side, Georgia State and Troy, they were canceled. But you've also got Coastal Carolina, South Alabama. And then you look at the west, some good games with Arkansas State, Texas State, UTA, and UL Monroe as well shaping up. Now, 
We touched on it with the East, John, and if one of these teams, whether it be Coastal Carolina or Appalachian State, are to sweep their division this weekend, somebody's going to get the top spot in the Sun Belt, being that one of these one of those two teams loses today and one of those two teams wins today. Because Coastal won last night against South Alabama by 13. App State won over Georgia Southern. And this is just such a competitive Sunbelt East that this is the type of game today that really could make the difference at the end of the year between the one and two seed. Well, three and one's a lot better than two and two and two to state the obvious, but you know, like you said, you, you every game's gonna count. And you know, if you're sitting at three and one and then next weekend you go out and you win two games, now all of a sudden you're five and one. And if everybody continues to split, you've just jumped yourself out to a two or three game lead which in this shortened season, playing the same people over and over again in the familiarity of your opponents, that could be an insurmountable type of lead. So yes, today's game is huge, especially for Coastal Carolina and App to jump out to a three and one conference record and then hope to carry that over to next week. Uh, I just, you know, if you can get out to five and one, I think you're in the driver's seat, you know, heading home, but there's still gonna be a lot of games to play. Well, and did receive confirmation that Coastal Carolina did just come away with a victory against South Alabama. So Coastal is now three and one. So can Appalachian State match the win today with a sweep? Would be a sweep today for the Mountaineers. Can they match that and go to three and one? This Sunbelt East is going to be a good one all year long. Just back and forth. Tons of teams that really match up well on paper. Here come the Eagles. Use a Pietis, a transition three, and this one tapped out, but over the back was Prince Doyambi. And that's a good call. He climbed the back of Justin Forrest, and that's not what Brian Burke wanted to see from Toyambi. 10 seconds in, or 30 seconds into the second half. That's his third foul. Uh, he needs him out on the floor to bang with James Lewis Jr. He's the only one they've got that can really handle him inside. It looks like they're playing a little zone, which is really out of character for them. Gregory, the fader. And that's two uh, possessions right there that Dustin Kearns would like to have back to start second half. Kamari Brown just misfired from three. And James Lewis saved it right back to an eagle. So Georgia Southern's going to hit the reset button here. Shifty move from Yuza Pietis. And how about the step through to finish? That's impressive. And that's coming from a guy that was known primarily as a three-point shooter. Showing a little bit more than people thought he had in his uh, bag of tricks. Justin Forrest attacking. Gregory, he'll fade again, and this time he cashes in. Donovan Gregory just so smooth. I like it when the offense for the Mountaineers runs through him. He seems to always make the right decisions, and when he doesn't have somebody to kick the ball back out to, as he just shown, he can make the mid-range jump shot, or he can get the ball all the way to the rim. Boone. Shot fake on Parker. Now he'll dump it into Good Toyambi. Pass. Good pass. Toyambi timed that slip of that screen perfectly. Excellent pass from Boone. Here comes that 1-2-2 two, two from the Georgia Southern Eagles again. Yeah, Georgia Southern. They'll mix it up defensively, but seen a lot of that 1-2-2 two, two drop back into a man in the half court. And it's a foul as Boone shoved over Forrest trying to set the screen. And that's gonna be team foul number two on the Eagles of Georgia Southern. Adrian Delph kicks to Justin Forrest. Here's the skip. Parker with six on the shot clock. Inside to James Lewis. Muscles his way up. 
And that was a shot clock violation. Georgia Southern was ready to go. They had the rebound and had taken a couple of steps. Yeah, Brian Berg's pretty upset, and rightfully so. They, they had James Lewis Jr. on the floor underneath the basket, and they were getting ready to run out into transition. And uh, surprisingly, the official blew the whistle. Normally, when the defense has that possession, when that shot clock goes off, they usually just let them play. Kamari Brown, quick crossover. Gregory poked it loose. Out in front of everyone. He'll dunk it home. And Donovan Gregory turning defense into offense. He's playing a heck of a game for the Mountaineers on both ends. Boone, the lob. Oh, this one tipped up and in. Somehow that ball went in. I have no idea how that ball went in, Kendall. Dustin Kearns wants an offensive basket interference call, and he, he might have a, a point with Cam Bryant hanging on the rim as the ball went through. Forrest lets it go. James Lewis, big offensive board, put back in the foul. And maybe that'll get him going inside. No points in the first half for James Lewis Jr. And um, strong offensive rebound and a chance for the three-point play. So strong and physical underneath is James Lewis Jr. Let's get a second look. Keeps the ball high, goes up strong, initiates contact, exactly how you want your big fellow to play under the basket. You gotta love that as a coach as well, the, the, the big man not putting the ball on the floor, just keeping it high as John mentioned. Such a habit for a lot of post players to dribble it and put it back on the floor, but that time keeping it high above his chest and able to finish for the end one. And there he is again, cleaning the glass. So the percentages are starting to even out a little bit, Kendall, they, they've shot three threes in this half. They haven't gotten any to go yet. So maybe they're coming back to earth a little bit on that three point line. Forrest cradled the ball through traffic. Now Georgia Southern has some numbers. Kamari Brown in transition. Had it altered by Parker. That was good D. Well, they say last touch by the Mountaineers, so Georgia Southern will keep possession after the media timeout. 15-43 left to play in the ball game. Georgia Southern by five. There's Brian Berg, the head coach for Georgia Southern. Can this team hold on to that lead? They, they led almost the entire game. With eight seconds last night, Donovan Gregory went to the free throw line for the Mountaineers. They ended up winning by 66-63. Good find inside in the jam. Elijah McCadden with authority. That's a great out, out of bounds play drew up by Coach Berg in the huddle right there. Got the easy backdoor dunk. Excellent execution. Almonese had the hot hand in the first half for the Mountaineers. Good feed inside, James Lewis, and he was fouled. Yeah, it looked like the official under the basket went to call jump ball on that, Kendall, and the uh, trail official saw it a little bit differently and overruled him. I like this lineup that the Mountaineers have on the floor right here. We'll get, a, we'll get a better look at it. Yeah, that's a tough call. I, I thought uh, Saversaw had his uh, hand straight up. I don't know if uh, McCadden got him from behind. Maybe that's what the trail official saw. We were kind of black, blocked off from that view. Bouncing around the rim. Just wouldn't drop for James Lewis, who is a really good free throw shooter. He's 75% on the season. He was up over, way over 80% uh, coming into the weekend. He struggled a little bit this weekend from the line. Well, he's going to get to the free throw line a ton. Missed them both, but an offensive rebound. Mountaineers will hit the reset button here with 12 seconds now on the shot clock. 
Delph drops it off. There's James Lewis. He'll nice make pass. up for it. That is a perfect example of the extra pass. Donovan Gregory caught it right in the middle of the lane, had an easy five-foot shot, but James Lewis had the dunk, so he gave it to him. Excellent, excellent teamwork by the Mountaineers. Boone surveys the floor. Weatherford pops high. Somehow that slipped through right to Cam Bryant. Missed everything on the J. Here comes Forrest. Almonese Gregory slicing through the paint and finger rolls it over the front edge. He does. I, I can't say it enough, Kendall, but he gets the ball in the middle of the floor. Good things happen. Three-point game here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center. Georgia Southern without a made three in the second half. They were on fire. Ten made triples in the first half. And this one's off the heel of the rim from Boone. Almodice attacks again. Couldn't get it to go, but he's got a couple of free throws coming. And he did that several times in the last couple of minutes of last night's game. To, to push the Mountaineers over the top towards the end, taking it to the basket hard like that, finishing and getting to the free throw line. Prince Toyambi is not on the floor for Georgia Southern right now. He's got three fouls. Almodice leaves it short. Let's take a second look here. One At pass, two pass, three pass. That's 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 great execution by the Mountaineers to that one extra pass. It's just you can't defend it. And Gregory, or excuse me, Almonese swirls in the second one. It's a two-point game. Got some fresh legs in for the Mountaineers. C.J. Huntley's back in for Donovan Gregory. You got Deshaun Parker in for Justin Forrest. Weatherford drives and kicks. Shot clocks at eight. Dumping it inside. There he is, Prince Toyambi. He, he, had to, he had to sit down for a few minutes, John, because he got his third early to start the second half, but there he is making his presence known again. They're, they are so much better when he's on the floor, Kendall. He just gives them a presence around the rim on, on both ends, offensively and defensively. Parker thought about the J. Huntley a shot fake. He'll step into the short corner one. And this one missed everything. The toss back. Yuza Pietis, what the drop off and the slam for Tuiambi. I tell you, this is the coming out of, of uh, Yuza Pietis. I tell you what, coming into this game, he, he hadn't played much. And uh, right now, he's their best player. Instant offense has been provided from Prince Tuiambi. And a timeout, Dustin Kearns. You're right, John. Georgia Southern just looks like a totally different team when Prince Toyambi is on the floor. Yeah, uh, you know, he's he's young. Like I said before, he's got to figure out how to play without fouling. Uh, but he's he's active around the basket defensively. He's always in the right spot. And, and he's by far their best rebounder. So, you know, he's got to figure this out. And the sooner the better for Georgia Southern. 54-48. We'll take a break. Georgia Southern Appalachian State will continue right after this. Fifty-four, forty-eight. Georgia Southern with a six-point lead, without a made three in the second half, and they hit ten of those in the first half. Appalachian State with the basketball here. And it's a push off from Deshaun Parker. Yeah, that's an obvious call right there in front of the officials, 40 feet from the basket. You're not going to be able to get away with that. So, uh, mental mistake by the Mountaineers coming out of the timeout. I tell you what, I've been impressed with the Eagles, Kendall. I mean, they haven't made us three. Uh, they haven't let it get into their head. And they're, they're finding a way to hold the Mountaineers off here in the second half, still with a six-point lead.
There's the kickback. This time to McCadden, he couldn't knock it down and a foul against the Eagles. Hey John, this is just a mirror image from the three point line for Georgia Southern yesterday. I think Toyambi just picked up his fourth. And Prince Toyambi did just pick up his fourth. That's, that's a, a big blow. That's for a Eagles. major blow for the Eagles. He had just started to get into a rhythm on both ends of the floor, and at that really hurts them. Back with the one-two-two look again for Georgia Southern. And I like the idea of them coming out with some pressure. They they got to they they cannot repeat what they did last night and just kind of back off and let the Mountaineers do what they want to do on the offensive end. Delf trying to create with seven on the shot clock. Stick back from Duhart, no. That time he lost it, but was fouled on the arm. So he's got a couple of free throws coming for the Mountaineers. We'll take another break with 11.38 left to play in the second half. It's 54-48. Georgia Southern up by six. RJ Duhart gonna be at the free throw line for the Mountaineers. These are big, John. Appalachian State, seven of 13 from the charity stripe today. Well, this is this is the point in the game when the Mountaineers really started to get back in it last night. And um, then the Eagles, I'm sure they're aware of that. And they're going to need to uh, stay aggressive, stay pushing it on offense. And uh, they haven't made a three-point shot this, this second half. So uh, they've got to be thinking about that a little bit too. Nice pass by Force into R.J. Duhart. 54-51. All of a sudden, it's a three-point game. Mountaineers showing a big 2-3 zone, extending it out. I like that change coming out of the timeout from Coach Kearns. Give him a different look. Good bounce pass from Weatherford. Back out front, Yuzapitis thought about it. That's Seven on great, the shot clock. That was a great closeout by both Adrian Delph and Justin Forrest to keep him from shooting that ball. Weatherford reverses it home. Mackenzie McCadden taking the ball into the middle of that defense and finding Weatherford. Just under 11 minutes to go from Boone, North Carolina. Delf rises. Big rebound for Yuzapiatis. Eagles without a made three in the second half. McCadden bumps. Almonacy will be the culprit on the foul. Mountaineers jump right back in the man after showing that 2 3 zone coming out of the timeout. Anytime you can switch defenses, you can confuse the offense a little bit. Little nickel and dimer on Michael Almonacy. Giving the ball under the basket to George Southern. James Lewis Jr. going to check back in for R.J. Duhart. Cam Bryant for Georgia Southern. Shot clock's at seven. Boone's got to make his move. Two on the shot clock. He'll rise. Nearly got it to go. And out of bounds. This will go back to the Mountaineers. Yeah, it looked like McCadden was standing out of bounds when he went to save. That was a good call by the official. He was right on that one. We have not seen Zach Bryant today at all. Has not played for Georgia Southern. Double figure score coming in as James Lewis trims the deficit to three. Mountaineers have decided to really get the ball inside on the offensive end, and that's a great strategy, especially with Tiambi sitting on the bench for Georgia Southern. Boone. Into the paint, trying to teardrop, and it was left short. Rebound to Justin Forrest. Was trying for the tie that time. 
And back comes Eric Boone. Quick crossover dribble, had his pocket picked. Here come the Mountaineers. Forrest, the shot fake. He'll kick it out to tie the game up, and Delph does just that. Great job of penetrating and kick by Justin Forrest, finding the trailing Adrian Delph, really sharing the ball. Justin's a great passer off the penetration, and we just saw that. Looks like the Mountaineers are playing man on, uh, on their uh, misses, and they're playing that 2-3 zone on makes. I like that strategy, giving a different look for, depending on what you do on the offensive end. Yuzapitis missed everything from three. Ice cold are the Eagles. And in transition is Adrian Delft yeah. to give Appalachian State the lead. And Brian Berg might want to think about a timeout right here. They're, they're really struggling on both ends. Looking confused, especially on the offensive end. Yuzapitis hesitates. Had it tied up. And got to be a jump That's ball, right? Be. It is. That's and the possession arrow is going to stay with the Eagles. That's got to be a jump ball. John, Georgia Southern, their half-court offense right now just looks so discombobulated, especially from what we saw in the first half. Give the Mountaineers credit. But you kind of get the sense that the Eagles have got to find their niche from the three-point line here very soon, or this could be a repeat of yesterday. Well, they're still getting the threes. They're just not falling. And, um, you know, at this point, it's, it's, it's starting to become mental, I'm sure, for them. Uh, they need to see the ball go in the basket. That's a good start right there for Boone. Ten made threes from the Eagles in the first half without a made triple in the second half. We played almost 13 minutes into the second half. Almonacy rises. And there's a foul underneath the basket against the Eagles. And I believe that's going to go against Cam Bryant, they say which will take us to a media timeout. 7.38 left to play. We're tied at 58. We'll be right back on ESPN+. Plus. Tied at 58 all with 7.38 left to play in the Holmes Convocation Center. Big implications for both of these teams. If Appalachian State wins today, they would tie Coastal Carolina at the top of the Sun Belt East at 3-1. and one through the first two weekends, because Coastal Carolina just swept South Alabama last night and today. Georgia Southern with a win can get to two and two, would find themselves just a game behind Coastal Carolina. And James Lewis Jr. is able to strip the net on the, on the free throw. That's a big shot for him, seeing the ball go in the basket. He was 0 for 3 before that shot, which is kind of out of character for him. A 75% um, free throw shooter coming into the day. So uh, I would be surprised if he didn't knock this one down too. So James Lewis Jr. with two big free throws there. Right at seven and a half minutes left to play here inside of the Holmes Convocation Center for Boone, North Carolina. High post entry this time, the turnaround drops. And I like that adjustment coming out of the timeout for the Eagles. They recognized that time that the Mountaineers were in a 2-3 zone. They got it to the high post, which is the weakness of a 2-3 zone, and, and got a nice little 10-footer. James Lewis blocked, not once but twice that time by Savrasov. And I like how the officials are letting these guys play, especially inside. You want to let the players decide the outcome of this game. These, both these teams have really fought hard the last two nights. You'd hate for the officials to feel like they need to take this game over at this point. Eric Boone surveys the floor at the top. Had his pocket picked. Good D that time by Forrest and Gregory on the double team, able to swipe it away. And I tell you what, Justin Forrest has been all over the place defensively. That's got to be his third or fourth steal. And a foul is going to go against Eric Boone as well. Now we've got some extracurricular going on between these two teams. Yeah, these guys need to calm down a little bit. This has been too good a game to interrupt it with any kind of foolishness like that. Fisher's doing a good job getting in between them. Mm. 
Yeah, it looked like two guys just getting tangled up right there. Yeah, it looked like a couple other guys came in at the end, Weatherford. Let's just play basketball, guys. So James Lewis Jr. will be at the free throw line. 634. That was the 19 foul against Georgia Southern. So Eagles one away from putting the Mountaineers in the double bonus. App State only has two team fouls in the second half. Just the first lead for the Mountaineers since early in the first half, Ken, I believe it is. Yeah, it is. Well, other than the 58-56 lead just a while ago, a couple okay. minutes ago. But you're right, John. They have really battled back. This is the second day in a row. They were down by 16 in the second half, as we mentioned earlier in last night's contest. Able to come back and win that game 66-63. Well, Yuzapitis and Tayambi are back on the floor for Georgia Southern. So this, this is their chance here to win this ball game. They've got to have those two guys playing to win this game. Bounce feed underneath to Prince Toyabi, who's playing with four fouls. Shot clock at five, and poked out of Boone's hands again. Gregory, monster Showtime. dunk. 64-60. And Georgia Southern confused right now. Brian Berg wants a timeout. So with 550, the Mountaineers have all the momentum in this ball game. We'll take a second look at the Donovan Gregory throwdown. Elbows above the rim, throw it down. Have some fun out there. So a four point Mountaineers lead with 550 left to play here in the second half. And John, just an effort by Dustin Kearns' group, doesn't matter how far they get down, they always seem to come back. This team, and they, they were down in a lot of games last year in this coaching staff's first year with this program. And this team just never quits. His motto for this program is take the stairs. Well, there's one thing that's consistent across the board with this team from season to season is they're gonna play defense. And they're gonna play defense for 40 minutes. They're not gonna play for 38, they're not gonna play for 35 or, or 25. They're gonna play for 40 minutes. And if you're not gonna play for 40 minutes, well then you're gonna be sitting over there with Coach Kearns. So these guys know that, that's the culture of this program. And if you're willing to get after it on the defensive end for 40 minutes, you're gonna be in almost every ball game. Now there's gonna be times where you might get blown out when you just play a better team. But all things being said, they're consistent on the defensive end and that takes care of a lot of problems when you're playing these games in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s like, like the Mountaineers like to do. So um, that's the big consistency. And, um, you know, when you get run outs like we just have with Don and Gregory getting the, um, the dunk, then it just brings your whole energy level to, uh, you know, just your energy to a whole new level and, and um, you know, I'm watching Georgia Southern here and they're hanging their heads. This is a crucial minute and a half, two minutes of the ball game right here for them. Nice floater that time for McCadden. Well, talked about it, their, their offense in the half court has been discombobulated in the second half, but as much as we say that, with the 10 threes in the first half, they find themselves only down by two. Can they weather this storm that App State has with the momentum right now. Faris pulls up and connects. Use a Pietus with three made triples in the first half. This time he'll step into one, but they say he traveled. Yeah, they're just, I, I still don't think they've figured out what the Mountaineers are doing defensively. I keep waiting for Georgia Southern to really bring some pressure too. They, you know, everything they've done today has been kind of token pressure. Good pass and James Lewis is able to finish.
just under five minutes to go. Launching to three and hitting is Eric Boone. Well, maybe that'll get them going, Kendall. Maybe that'll give them a little more confidence. They've still got to find some stops on the defensive end. Well, Boone looked as if he was hesitating to shoot it, and then it went through for the first made three of the second half. Forrest couldn't hit, and Al Georgia's Southern has a chance to possibly tie right here on this possession. McCadden, the kick out, Brown missed it wide that time. But it's off of, well, they say Georgia v. Georgia Southern basketball when we return. 3.57 left to play in the second half. We'll take one more break. We've got the finish coming up between the Eagles and the Mountaineers. Look at the fouls. 3.57 left to play in the, the ball game. App stayed up three, 68 to 65. We told you what was at stake for these two teams. Georgia Southern with a chance to go to two and two in the conference. App State could go to three and one and they would be tied in first with Coastal Carolina. Extra pass to Weatherford. The Euro, the kick. The ball really moving this possession for Georgia Southern, and it results in a two for Weatherford. That's, That's good, how the ball movement we saw in the first half for Georgia Southern. That was a good possession for Georgia Southern. They, they did not hesitate. They were aggressive, moving the basketball. That's, that's got to make them feel good going down to the defensive end. Delph, long three, big rebound for McCadden. This is a huge possession. They've got, if they can get back on top of the score, that's going to give them a lot of confidence down the home stretch. And Boone was hacked on the arm by Adrian Delph. Well, a couple passes before that, they missed Kamari Brown on a backdoor cut. Would have had an easy layup. Mountaineers had good pressure on the ball, so they couldn't get it to him. Mention, we have not seen Zach Bryant in this contest. He's a double-figure scorer for Georgia Southern. Their leading scorer at that. That certainly affected the Eagles any way you look at it, but red hot in the first half with 10 made threes. Yuza Piatus has really stepped up in this series against the Mountaineers. There's the kick, there he is right there using the shot fake, trying to bounce this one along the baseline, he turns it over. Forrest, some miscommunication with Gregory. Almonese all alone. You Big bet. Big shot. Big shot from Michael Almonese. It's crucial here that the Eagles get a good look. Weatherford, he'll kick it. McCadden in the paint, rises, connects. Good decision by McCadden. Excellent closeout by the Mountaineers. Get it to the elbow, get a nice easy shot. They gotta get a stop here though. It's too late to be trading baskets. Justin Forrest with the basketball in his hands. Hit a game winner in this building against Georgia Southern last year. That was a Sports Center top 10 nominee. And there's exactly two minutes. And Georgia Southern says go to the table and review that. Brian Berg is wanting it as well. He says it was awful Mountaineer. And the rule in college basketball is under two minutes, you can go to the table. That's exactly what they're going to do here. That's a good move by Coach Berg to point that out. Um, and Grant Weatherford, the fifth-year senior as well, was all over that. And that's what you expect out of an older player. They played well with him down the stretch on the floor, Kendall, and um, we'll get a look at it here. See if we can roll that again. Yeah, if we can get another look at that. I didn't, I didn't get a look at the monitor in time. Yeah, this, this is a big review here. Well, let's see what we 
can get here. Ooh, yeah, Justin that's going to be last close. To touch that ball. may be going back to Georgia Southern here. I think it will be. Unless, unless Weatherford touched it before it hit the ground, it was obviously before the ball got hidden behind the basket support off of Justin Forrest. So it is Georgia Southern basketball, confirmed by the officials. Credit that guy right there, Grant Weatherford. Talked about his experience, the transfer from IUPUI, and he was the one that first signaled for that to be looked at. Well, wow, how aware did he have to be to know that it was two minutes on the clock too, Kendall? McCadden sizing up Almonese. Gets into the paint again, up and under. The tip back, yes, and who other than Prince Toyambi? He is, he's not saying again, he's got to find a way to be on the floor. He can't help him sitting over there with Coach Berg. Timeout, Dustin Kearns with 131 left in his second half. And Georgia Southern's faced adversity in this contest with Prince Toyambi. He's virtually played with four fouls the entire second half. They've had to kind of play him sparingly. And then no Zach Bryant today. Look at the follow for Toyambi here. Just a nose for the basket for the Eagles. Kid's got a lot of talent, Kendall. A lot of talent. Can't wait till he learns to play without fouling because he's going to be an exciting player to watch the next couple years. Tons of upside for Brian Berg and this Georgia Southern crew. And he knows what's at stake right here as well, telling his team in the, in the huddle here. Coach Berg kind of really felt like one got away yesterday. They had that 45-29 lead early in the second half. Give Appalachian State credit, though, for the second straight day. They've really, because Georgia Southern hit seven threes in the first half yesterday. The Mountaineers were able to lock down the Eagles in the second half. And the same thing here, only one made three for Georgia Southern in the second half. And Forrest traveled. Dustin Kearns thought he was fouled out front. I didn't see a travel, but uh, yeah, Coach Kearns needs to be careful. You don't want to pick up a technical foul in this situation. McCadden dumps it inside. Toyambi had the shot altered by James Lewis, but somehow it was tracked down by McCadden. Dancing around the top. And pickpocket from who other than Gregory. Weatherford try chasing him down from behind, but Gregory finishes. Smart decision by Weatherford not to foul Gregory in that situation. You don't want to turn that into a three-point play. Boone lost the handle, and it was last touched by Justin Forrest. Let's take a look at Donovan Gregory just coming in to take it away. And finishing on the other end. How many times have we seen that this afternoon, John? I tell you, he, he's very active on, on the uh, defensive end. He seems to always be in the passing lanes, in the right place, on the help side. And that puts you in a position to make plays like that. Collision between Yuzapiatis and McCadden. The Mountaineers have got to know where Uzapiatis is. And a hard foul from Justin Forrest. And I tell you what, that's only the fourth team foul on the Mountaineers, so they've got several to give before the Eagles get into the bonus in this situation. Mountaineers really gambling is on the help side the last couple of possessions, and it's paid off. We just saw the steal and lay-in from Donovan Gregory. Well, you can afford to be aggressive here if you're the Mountaineers. You still have two fouls to give before you're in the bonus. You just got to make sure you don't foul a shooter. McCadden swings it. Boone for three. Just off the mark. And the shot clock is dead now. So 26 seconds on the game clock. Eagles have got a foul. You got no choice but to foul as Forrest hoisted up. And they just fouled a 91% free throw shooter in Justin Forrest. And Forrest, one of two at the charity stripe today. It's 
22 and a half seconds, still an eternity in college basketball, but Certainly going to have to hope for missed free throws coming down the stretch of this contest. Well, you got to get if you're if you're Georgia Southern whether whether he makes or misses this shot, you've got to get it up the floor quickly. You can't waste a lot of time. You got to attack the basket. If you get a three, you get a three. If not, you take the easy two. Forrest makes them both. So you don't necessarily look for a three here, do you, John? You maybe try to get a quick two? You got to attack the basket and let things fall into place from there. And Boone nearly got it to fall. He'll have two free throws. That might be even better with the clock stopped. Well, that was fortunate for the Mountaineers that that ball didn't go in. Kind of a mental mistake by Michael Almonese. He dodged the bullet there with that ball not going in the basket. And Eric Boone at the free throw line for Georgia Southern. Been a little shaky at 65% from the charity stripe this year, and there's that one pops out on him. If I'm Georgia Southern, I put somebody on Justin Forrest right now. Make or miss on this free throw. You cannot allow him to get the basketball back and shoot these free throws. You want somebody else at the line because you're at the position now that you have to foul. Missed them both. Offensive board, but a foul. And they say a lane violation on Prince Toyambi. I think they might have called a personal foul on Toyambi. And Brian Berg. Oh, they. Oh, he's being the one called for the foul. That's why Brian Berg is upset. Yeah, he's all the way out on the floor. I think he might have a reason to be upset. If we could see that on a replay, it just looked like a physical play on the ball. I don't know if he shoved off. I'd like to take a look at that. Yeah, I don't see a foul there. I think Coach Berg's got a right to be upset. Arms are locked up there between James Lewis and Toyambi, but tough spot now. Two missed free throws, 18.2 ticks left, and Georgia Southern got no choice but to foul now. Well, and I, and I believe it was, I don't, I don't know who got fouled, but hopefully it was somebody other than Justin Forrest who just knocked down the last two. Looks like it's James Lewis Jr. who's also a, a very good free throw shooter for the Mountaineers, although he struggled a little bit tonight, missing his first three, but he's made his last two. And J James Lewis Jr. will be at the free throw line. He's been a good free throw shooter this year for the Mountaineers as he cashes in on the first. From a mental perspective, this would be a huge couple of wins for Appalachian State. The Mountaineers and the Chanticleers of Coastal Carolina would be the only two teams at three and one in the Sun Belt East if App State can close it out. McCadden loses control. That's off of the Eagles going back to the Mountaineers. And it might be too little too late for Georgia Southern now, John. Yeah, I think that's going to just about do it unless, you know, a miracle happens here in the last 12 and a half seconds. Omanese, it was fumbled. And it was on the baseline. They're going to say Georgia Southern basketball. Yeah, I don't know if he reestablished himself after he threw the ball into Adrian Dell to be able to receive that basketball. It's awful close. I'm surprised that the officials aren't taking a look at that. So it is going to be Eagles basketball with 11.6. So a made three here could really make things interesting. It would make it interesting. It would make it a one-possession game. And, I mean, you can get a quick three out of a basket out of bounds play. Every team's got it in, in their portfolio. So, um, you know, Coach Berg still got timeouts. You make a three, you get a timeout, and you foul the right guy. You got a shot. That to be a quick inbound and a quick three for it Georgia almost Southern. It almost has to be a catch and shoot three, Kendall. Um, I don't think you have a lot of time to dribble the basketball around. Yusuf Pietis has been the catch and shoot guy for the Eagles this weekend. He's coming back out on the floor. And you got to be careful if you're the Mountaineers here. You don't want to foul a three-point shooter in this situation. 
Firing is McCadden. And it was just off the mark. And Almonese going to dribble it into the front court. Georgia Southern will not foul. And Appalachian State pulls off the sweep against their rival Georgia Southern here in Boone this weekend. And they move to three and one in the Sun Belt standings, tied at the top of the Sun Belt East with Coastal Carolina. Mountaineers doing a good job of holding home court this weekend. Let one slip away to Troy last weekend. But they're sitting at three and one, on, and they're at the top of the East, like you said, with Georgia Southern. Now they've got to go on the road next weekend against a very good South Alabama team. And uh, it'll be the first time that they've been on the road in Sun. Uh, Sunbelt Conference play. That'll be a good test for them. Mountaineers in the game on a 6-0 run in the final 52 seconds to win it by six, 77-71. Donovan Gregory with a monster 19 points for the Mountaineers today. Adrian Delph with 17 and James Lewis Jr. A double-double with 14 points and 11 rebounds for Appalachian State. And this program is certainly taking the stairs to the top of the Sun Belt. 77-71, once again, the final score for Kendall Lewis alongside my partner, John Reister, and the rest of our production crew. This has been a presentation of ESPN to view this game in its entirety and other games on the ESPN family of networks. Be sure to visit ESPN.com or the ESPN app. Once again, we say good night from Boone, North Carolina.